All right, so let's do this video from here. A new resort they've built directly next to our place. Anyone need a bungalow? Well, it's right here, but that's not what we're here to talk about today. We are not here to talk about these little Kubos that they have now built right next to where we live. But anyway, guys, um, <clears throat> what are we here to talk about? We're here to talk about the dangers of the Philippines, and I might have just crossed into one of them. And it's funny, in this video, I'll talk about the three major things. But the biggest danger in the Philippines is yourself. You are, yes guys, your own worst enemy. And um, of the three major things that I see as dangerous, that is the one thing that you can control the most. And the one thing that plays a part in every single one of the dangers that I go over. So let's get started. Danger number one, your health. Your health is the biggest issue in the Philippines and it can manifest it itself in a few different ways. First, um, I would say the way that you take care of your health. The way that you take care of your health in the Philippines is a challenge. It is a real big challenge. And what I see a lot of people do and why I stopped drinking beer this year was there just seems to be a culture of a bunch of guys that get around and drink all day or go to the bar. And it's a very easy life. A lot of people here are retired. They're um, at a stage in life where they don't need to get up every day, go out, produce. Um, so it's a very laid back atmosphere. And I'm talking specifically about expats having this issue. And you can really tell who in the Philippines is wearing the miles on their body and who is taking care of themselves and not going down this road of um, specifically alcohol. But also food is a big one. There's not really great food here in the Philippines. It's hard to take care of yourself in that manner. Um, and then the other aspects of health, there just aren't the hospital facilities that you would find in like a Bangkok or a maybe a Kuala Lumpur. No one that I know of comes to Manila for health tourism, but health tourism is a big thing in, um, in Thailand. It's a big thing in, I think, Malaysia as well. And um, not really sure about Indonesia and what they have as far as their health. Which brings me to another point. I really, um, one of the best criticisms that I got on this channel when I first got here was that I first got here and that I didn't know anything. And that's right. So if you did just get here and you want to be a YouTuber, there's three videos you need to make. Uh, <laughs> Manila wasn't expecting this. Foreigner tries Lechon first time and first impressions of the Philippines after one week. Destined for stardom after that. But anyway, that's an aside. So health is a very, very big issue here in the Philippines, and I would say it's the number one. I've seen um, a friend have, a, have heart problems, have to go to the local hospital, and then um, he didn't make it. So that was just, I think, right as the events of 2020 were playing out. And um, I do know uh, motorbikes are a major, major danger here in the Philippines. And um, my, my buddy Jap that lives in Samar, he said an interesting thing to me that really stuck with me. He said, if you get hit out here in Samar, it's three hours drive to a hospital before you can get to the proper um, equipment, the people that know what they're doing. So you've got to not only, you know, most trauma medicine, you have to get to a doctor within the first like 30 minutes, something quick. Somebody will have a stat here for me that I don't know about. But um, you're talking of adding three hours time to your treatment 
and and uh, assuming that a vehicle can pick you up and take you right away there's probably going to be some lag time so that is a major major issue um, with health is the putting your yourself back together after you've been hurt here in the philippines so just a gorgeous day out here guys got a couple young ones off of school Alright, so now we will get to the second part. Alright, so the second thing of the three dangers of the Philippines is the bad business deal. This is something that you should avoid at all costs. So what, is it, what does it mean a bad business deal? Well, my advice is never into, enter into... <laughs> A business deal where you have a lot to lose by dying. Um, how can you avoid this? Well, I've seen twice. The, the two, um, the first, I've seen three deaths here of foreigners in the Philippines. The first one was health related, like I talked about, and the next two, I believe, were bad business deals. So, the first thing uh, you want to have to protect yourself is you, you never want to be in a situation where you have a lot to lose and someone else has a lot to gain so how do you avoid this well first of all you choose the right people and that could be the hard thing to be able to discern you really have to give that time and live in a community to know who's trustworthy and, and who's not and even then you may not you may not know um, the answer to that so what would I say I would, if you are going to go into a business deal, I would structure it in a way where there's cash flow, where there's monthly um, income that the other side is receiving in response to the, the value that the other side is providing. So, um, so nothing is upfront, nothing is there just all for the taking all at once, but cash flow. So, um, I could even go down to a, let's say you, you want to rent a property for a number of years, 10, 20 years, and the person wants it lump sum. Well, if you give it to them lump sum, then you're at a disadvantage from a value standpoint because now you no longer matter. Whereas if you structured the deal in a way that was cash flow, where monthly cash flow has to come in or else the deal goes south then you put yourself in a position um, to be a little bit protected because someone else has a vested interest in your success <laughs> of staying alive. <laughs> and, and I want to say these dangers under the caveat of, um, you know, I, there's a lot of things I don't worry about. Crime, uh, theft, small things um clean air clean water well to some degree we have to drink filtered water but you know what i mean there's a lot of things that i don't worry about that maybe i would if i were in the west or the city um so take take these dangers as not being something that's completely overwhelming but there's something that you can kind of kind of deal with so Yeah, don't, when you're in a deal with someone, also don't be afraid to walk away. I mean, that's just negotiations. You might need to walk away. But again, I've, I've seen two people. Um, one supposedly bought a piece of land and didn't have, uh, wasn't married or a girlfriend or anything. He put it in some someone else's name. And that was a property that I had actually looked at. And he was found uh, face down, uh, blunt force trauma. So the investigation of that is inconclusive, but I'm reading between the lines a little bit and I'm, I'm not assigning blame or anything like that, but it does seem very mysterious. And the other situation was also a blunt force trauma um, of someone who had been in a business deal and it went south. And um, there was a legal fight over it from what I was told, allegedly, and, and that foreigner ended up deceased so have I heard of positive business deals yes um, 
you know, I have a friend who's the owner of a of a of a restaurant in another city, and he's worked out long term leases with uh, his girlfriend or wife's family, and they've, he's had a very su successful business for a number of years because, in my mind, it's been going back to what I said. Nothing nothing necessarily all the way up front, but you want to keep that cash flow situation coming every month, and so that there's a, a mutual benefit. Uh, Everyone can kind of succeed in the matter. All right, so we've come to the final danger, and I would say that's your reputation in the Philippines. And again, going back to rule number one, you are the one that controls this to a large degree. Um, if you have a big YouTube channel, <laughs> <laughs> you might have a Judas in the community that likes to stir the pot because he can create 23 screen names for you and try and cause you problems. But uh, at the end of the day, how do you mitigate these, uh, these issues, which are many times stemmed by other foreigners? Uh, what I try and do is just simply, very, very simply, um, like today's a beautiful day. So when I'm done with this video, I'm gonna start uploading it. And then I'm gonna go through a walk into the community. And I'm just gonna go down the main road and I'm gonna say hello to people as I walk. I'm gonna wave, smile, say hi to the kids. It's my way of getting exercise and um, not being sedentary. But also, there's a secondary benefit in the community and that is that people visibly see me. They don't just drive by, they see the nice car, and they don't hear from me or they maybe they watch a video on the internet or somebody starts a rumor about me or that kind of stuff but all that happens it's um it's really that uh i'm going out there i'm waving i have a presence in the community and it's not always the same people that i wave to but you know I'm going out there, I'm, I'm having a visible presence, and a lot of expats, they, they stay, they hunker down. There's a guy who lives, I'm not gonna point in the direction, but I was like, Chrissy, that's such a nice house. They're, they're doing renovations on it, and uh, it's really beautiful, but nobody lives there. And she goes, no, there's a foreigner that lives in there. And I'm like, what the heck? I've never seen the guy. So <clears throat> maybe out of sight, out of mind, is his, uh, or he's got other concerns, he can't do it, I'm, my advice is talking about but I think there's a lot to be gained in just showing yourself waving to people and creating kind of a good atmosphere around your your personality and so if you get into a situation where you need the backing of the community people are gonna say hey I remembered you know Tim he was walking down the street and waved to me they're not gonna say that but they're gonna have a generally positive view about you um, you can play basketball with the kids. I do that in Samar. I don't do that so much here, although I have. Um, you know, and then we have the general nature, the general stuff like uh, that's that's a little bit more obvious. You know, rice, buy rice, give it to the neighborhood captain, um, donate items to the school, all that kind of good stuff. So. You know, Chrissy did a lot during the typhoon to help out, and um, so of course, <coughs> excuse me, that's kind of the easy answer on it. But I think the best thing to do is just go out there and walk and say hello to people. Um, you know, go grab a water at somebody's store. It's a little sorry, sorry store. When someone comes over to your house and does a little bit of work. Don't grind them down on the rate. You know, don't get taken advantage of. But I can't stand, I'm not one of those people that can go to a market and try and grind someone down who doesn't have as much as me and grind them down to the lowest price. I'm like, okay, what's fair? Let's get to something that's not, you're totally taking advantage of me, but let's get to something that's fair. And I feel like treating people well that come and work for you. Like we, um, we gave some, we've done birthday gifts, we've done, Christmas type bonuses stuff for people that have worked for us. So I think that's that's pretty important. But the simplest way to start off is just go through the community, do a 
I mean, even the <laughs> even the U.S. Navy goes through the Strait of uh, uh, the South China Sea and shows himself, you know. So, and not to say that that's that's a terrible analogy. Maybe I'll cut cut this. Maybe I won't. But um, but yeah, guys, three things. Remember that uh, four things actually. Number one, it all links back to you. You're your biggest enemy, and your health, bad business deals, and then your reputation in the community. So, all those things tie back to the original concept. And thanks everyone for making this a successful channel. Um, my YouTube analytics tell me that I'm almost to 40 million views on the channel, so that's pretty crazy. You know, I, I try and gain perspective by going to different places, seeing uh, Vietnam, Bali, uh, I've been to Thailand before, um, going to these different countries so that I'm not just a guy in my basement, you know, trying to tell you about the Philippines and have no perspective on anything else. So, got the chance to do some really fun trips this year. Um, so it's been a great 2022 and uh, appreciate everyone who supports the channel the easiest way to do that is to share these videos online with facebook or whatever that's the best way next best way subscribe um, like the video that kind of stuff and uh, one fun thing that we'll do it's not really fun necessarily but one thing i did last year is i gave my prediction on who was not going to make it through 2023 and last year i gave you guys queen elizabeth and I'm not sure, some people, when that happened, they, they emailed me, they put it in the comments. So this year, this year, my big prediction is Jimmy Carter. Jimmy Carter is not gonna make it through 2023. So if you have another opinion on, uh, on someone else, leave it in the comments section. I'll leave it there for the next 365 days for everyone to see. And uh, anyway, guys, thanks so much, take care.